Hi everybody, Steve Greenoff here from Lockdown Glidodrome and I can't wait till it's lifted and we're all back here having a party, having a boogie on a normal Saturday night here at the Glider. Okay, as you can see in uh, this lockdown, the room looks entirely different, totally empty, just waiting for you people to come back in. Let's have a walk round, see where you normally sit, and we'll have a look upstairs. I'm going to take you around the glider to one or two places you've perhaps never seen before. We'll be going backstage, have a look at the dressing rooms. But let's first of all come up the stairs. Good viewing spot this on a Saturday night. If you don't want to be on the dance floor all night. Great view. Okay, this is where uh, our sound guy and lighting guys, they, they sit and produce the show for you all. And uh, they control everything from here upstairs. And believe me, they do a fantastic job. They're here in the daytime on the Saturday when the band's setting up and they do a sound check. And uh, there might be three or four hours getting everything set up ready for the gig on Saturday night. These days we don't use the spotlight, but uh, well not very often, but uh, years ago that was always in use on a Saturday night when uh, when the big names came here, would have the, the light on, the spotlight on uh, Otis Redding, Stevie Wonder, Elton John, Jimi Hendrix, I can Tina Turner, Tom Jones, they've all been here at the Glider many, many years ago, but still an iconic venue. Okay, let's have a quick look uh, backstage into the dressing rooms. Now, that is a place most of the people here never have been. But it's, uh, everything is as it was back in 19, I think it was 62. Uh, nothing's changed in there. And all the big names came backstage, got themselves ready. And here we go. Features there of Elton John. Sweet, Billy Fury. Dusty Springfield. Electric Light Orchestra. The Animals. Otis Redding. I was here for that night. T-Rex. We love to boogie. And Jimi Hendrix. And all the big names like Otis Redding, Stevie Wonder, Elton John. We're always given dressing room number one. Because it's the only one with a hand basin and a toilet. Okay, and the, uh, the bands, when they've got like six or seven people, um, they, they had dressing room two, a little bit bigger, but very basic. This is how it looked all those years ago, and this is how it looks now. Here we go, this is uh, on the wall here, Mr. Clem Curtis. Very good friend of mine, sadly passed away three years ago. And uh, every, every time he came here, we'd stand at the bar before anybody came in and we'd have a pint of Guinness together. But I always used to pay for it. I don't know how that happened, but uh, sadly missed Clem Curtis. Okay, back in the day, all those name artists, uh, like I say, the Who, the Kinks, Jimi Hendrix, they all came up these these four steps 
And before they did, there's a, an old-fashioned telephone here. And uh, they'll say, they'd ring through to the uh, foyer, to the office, and say, we're ready to go. And it was one of these jobs. What about that, eh? And also back in the day, a lot of you won't know this, but the stage was a revolving stage. And you can actually see in the carpet, underneath this uh, tutty old blue carpet, there's a revolving turntable stage. And what used to happen when I used to play here in my band, you'd, there'd be a, a partition, centre stage, and one band would set up one side, and back to back, the other band would set up this side. So instead of, like we do now, when we have two bands on, having a little bit of an interval where I play music in between, it was straight round, and uh, the guy would come out, the uh, MC of the day, say thank you very much, whatever the name of the band was, please welcome so-and-so, and the next band would come round, playing, already playing, and then they'd get round here to the front of the stage to face the audience. This is done from, uh, from here, up in the control room. Uh, there's a similar box to this with uh, the coloured buttons there, and uh, the guy in the control room would press the button, and the stage would go round 180 degrees to bring the next band on. While that band's playing, the band that has just performed their set will get all the gear off, out of the off the stage, into the uh, passageway here, and the next band will put them on. This is the view then from uh, from the front of the stage. This is the view that I see every time here, and like I say, I'm just looking forward to looking out at uh, five or six hundred people, possibly more, when we open up again as soon as. When we do open up again, we have, uh, we've already secured a date next year for Scouting for Girls. Martin Kemp, he's coming back, doing his DJ set. The Wild Boys, Ultra 90s. Zeb Roots are doing a Bob Marley set, along with UB40 Experience. Status Quote. They're, they're booked to do uh, their set with a Rod Stewart tribute. Tribute to David Bowie. Now, David Bowie played here back in 1966 before he had the hit records. But uh, we have a tribute, a lad insane. They'll be coming back with a Blondie tribute called Blondid. Okay, I mentioned the, where they turn the stage round, the button. That, let's just have a quick look at the, the old control room that's not used now. But uh, back in the day, that's up here. And uh, that is where... And that is where everything was controlled from. Today, like I say, we do it from the back of the room with the lighting and the sound. But back in the, the 60s, it was done from this little room here. Okay, we're back upstairs and this is the control room looking over the stage and this is where the magic used to happen. Very, very, uh, <laughs> look at this bank of lights here. All of these sliders. <laughs> that was for the lights. And so on. And the guy who used to uh, operate the stage and everything, would look through this this window and he would get the uh, the nod from the MC and they, they'll, play, they'll play a few uh, records in between, look at that, play a few records uh, on occasions here before before the likes of Ricky T and uh, one or two others that uh, did the DJ and this was very very early and uh, he would press the button, he'd press the button here, and uh, that would control the stage as it spun round very slowly, but uh, like I say, the bands would start playing, 
and uh, quite nerve-wracking. Did it several times myself with the band, uh, but exciting to, to come round and be facing the audience in the glider room. Okay, this, this is the, this is the, um, the lighting switch that does, what we call them the mushroom lights, but the big, big lampshades, massive lampshades that uh, Mr. Malkinson uh, back in 1960 saw in a nightclub or dance hall in London and he uh, commissioned somebody that he wanted these, the same lampshades for the Glidodrome and uh, this is how it works and they they fade down to off and uh, at the beginning of the night let's put them up when people arrive it's a good good ambience good atmosphere to have the uh, the lampshades showing off the 1960s glided room i can remember as a kid as a young teenager uh not old enough really to be in here, but I was tall, so I got in. And I would come here and sit myself down here and watch the bands. Like I say, the Kinks, the Who, the Small Faces. I was here for the Small Faces when um, an incident happened. Nowadays, the uh, Small Faces music is very acceptable in the mod scene. But back in the 60s, when they came here, not so and they got into about the third song fourth song and somebody threw um an ashtray from the balcony he hit kenny jones the drummer on his head split his head open uh stevie marriott said a few choice words over the mic the band walked off stage and that was the end of their performance he ended up in uh, what was before pilgrim the general hospital in boston and to this day kenny jones still remembers the night well you would wouldn't you still remembers the night he played boston gliderdrome he talks about it if people dare ask him okay let's uh this is the it was always called the starlight room back in the day because the ceiling was actually all like christmas fairy lights and um there's like, I don't know, thousands and thousands of these little fairy lights. And at the end of the night, or towards the end of the night, they'd switch them on and uh, there's a, always a gasp of people. Wow. But unfortunately, as years went by, they became a little bit uh, out of date. I'd love to see them again now, but with the regulations of pat testing and whatever, unfortunately, no fairy lights in the ceiling. I'm going to show you, though, a picture of what it looked like back in 1960. Two. And that's the fairy lights and the partition in the center of the stage. And like I say, it, uh, one band will be playing that side and the other band will be stood, waiting all ready to go to, to be turned around to play. Okay, before the um, starlight was uh, built in 19 i was keep saying 62 it's 61 or 62 uh this is where the action was which is now the bingo hall but it was the big names of the day played in this room again i'm going back uh, all those years and uh dance bands and um, in the early 60s people like billy fury uh, he was booked to play here, but with the audience, a full room of, I don't know, five, six hundred people in here, he wouldn't, he refused to walk through, even with security, he refused to walk through from the dressing room there to the stage. And when I was a teenager and the Starlight Room was open, this was the bar. There was no bar in the, in the dance hall. It was here. And there was three sides three sides of the room was all bar now this room is uh, used for bingo totally bingo uh, on a tuesday tuesday evening wednesday afternoon friday saturday sunday evening and it is old-fashioned bingo as it used to be played all those years ago.
So like I say, back in the uh, in the 60s, there was none of the uh, tables and bingo and all that on a Saturday night. Everything was uh, no carpet floor, just a plain wooden floor, lino floor, whatever. Tables and chairs that moved about, bar three sides round, and then over the uh, PA system in here, it would tell you, ladies and gentlemen, five minutes before, then they'd announce the name act, the who, the small faces, the kinks. You weren't allowed to take your drink through to the uh, to the dance hall, so you had to finish your drink and then walk through and make the walk through the foyer into the what they call the starlight room. And when I say uh, played how it used to be, there's a sign here, you will not find any electronic devices to play bingo. We believe in a fair chance for all of our loyal customers. So it is, like I say, as it used to be, as the uh, as the numbers come up, they're read out, and uh, best way to play. Uh, this is a, a picture of my band when, when we played here uh, back in the day, Midnight Blue. And uh, this is myself here at the back, Tony Martin, Mike Stringer, and Jimmy Luff. Jimmy the drummer, Mick, Mike Stringer, the bass player, Tony Martin, lead vocalist, and myself on guitar. I don't know what's happened there. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. A little tour around the glided room, as it was and as it is. So uh, I want you all to keep safe, keep well, and hopefully, very soon, we shall all be back together here in the glider, listening to some of this music. Travels to your roll the dice.